playing the Radical Latino Show. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands in the air for New York's Radical. Oh, Latino is taking you to another level. people welcome back to another episode of the radical latino show it's your host the radical latino what is popping what is going on with you guys how you guys are doing in month number two and a half going to three on the quarantine i'm saying i know some cities are opening up or whatever but um i want to apologize for coming in late you know with the podcast had a lot to do with uh, the latest, the, the, the episode that I was uh, doing now, for some reason it got all messed up. Um, last week I asked you guys to, you know, call in with your, uh, to call in with your, uh, with your, you know, with, with voicemails or whatever the case is. And you guys did, you know, shout out to Yai, you guys did. But for some reason, when I try to extract them, all of them were corrupted. I don't know, to tell you the truth, I really don't know why. But all of them ended up being, you know, corrupted. It messed up the the, the whole thing. So I had to, like, redo this whole thing again. So there's a reason why it's, you know, coming in late. But a lot of you actually, you know, sent emails. So I'm definitely going to read that later on. But before all of that, I just want to ask you guys, how's everything going? How's everything been with you guys? Um, I'm going to be this week. I'm going to be dropping a trailer for something very special that I'm putting together just for the summer. It's going to be a limited run. It's just going to be for the summer. So if you guys want to go cop some, you could go cop some. But I'm going to just drop a trailer. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, stay in tune and look out for uh, for all that. You know what I mean? Um, With that being said, I want to read. Let me start. I want to read some um, some emails. All right. So this first email is from Maria, you know, and I as I as I said, you know, I want you. I wanted you guys to to call in or whatever the case is, because um, this is I made two years doing the podcast and hopefully you guys enjoyed it and i know for a fact you guys enjoyed it because you guys like left a bunch of voicemails you know what i'm saying and i'm sorry you guys i couldn't i couldn't extract i'm gonna have to figure something out but um let me just read the email from maria maria basically said hey radical um how you doing thank you very much for actually contributing to my education before I discovered your podcast, I was actually lost and I didn't know where my history came from. I'm actually half Mexican and Puerto Rican. Oh, shout out to you. And right now I live in New Mexico. When I discovered you, the whole El Paso, um, Texas thing, the whole, El, oh, she's saying the whole El, El Paso uh, shooting happened. And that opened my eyes on white supremacy, and then you gave me more insight. Thank you for do, continue on doing this for two years, and wish you many more years, and have a good one. All right. Well, you know, shout out to you. Shout out to you, Maria. Um, I got another one from Emily. It just it is very short. It says, "Thank you very much for your two years. Um, I'm a super fan." I just want to shout out. <laughs> All right, shout out to Emily. Uh, another one from Troy said, "Hey, um, I'm glad to see another La- uh, La- Latino talking about issues in the Latin community. I'm um, I'm half black and half Cuban, and this and what you're what you're doing is very commendable. Thank you very much. Shout out to you. All right, cool. And, and one last one from." Puerto Rican Nation, PR Nation, <laughs> for PR Nation, it just it just says it just says shout out to you, for you for making two years and many more. All right, well shout out to yeah, you know I really um I really appreciate it. Shout out to you guys. 
Um, also, last week's episode was episode 89, talking about neutralizing workplace racism. You know, I got um, some some feedback from my um, from my uh, from my Instagram. Um, way more than I did on on the YouTube. But remember, if you guys want me to read your comments on this episode, go to the YouTube my YouTube channel. On this episode, on the comment section, just write your comments and I'll read it for next week. Um, Smith says, good advice. All right, shout out to Smith. La Prince, uh, La Princess, I just I made her a moderator uh, a couple of days ago. La Princess says, first time I'm late to this. Well, all right, cool, you know. Um, Truth Teacher says, no, I want it now, don't want to wait. Oh yeah, because I usually, um, when I make, when I do these episodes, I usually have them like, you know, uh, I usually have them like, you know, um, premiered, you know what I'm saying? That's what I, I usually have them premiered. And a lot of people were giving a lot of, um, good insight uh, onto the chat. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people were giving a lot of good insight onto, onto the chat. So, uh, you know, shout out to them. Shout out to everybody that was on the chat. And right now it said, uh, that's basically that was basically it. Um, I ran the ethnicity. Uh -huh. Oh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all the comments that I have for you guys today. Now let me get in total. All right, cool. I'm so disorganized right now. Jesus Christ. All right, let me get into the first topic that I want to talk about today. Was basically the COVID. Um, COVID-19, you know, some states are opening up now and so far, Texas, for what I've known, Texas is already pretty much opened up. Um, not everything, but maybe like 80% of Texas already opened up. California is on, I think, was it step two on opening up? I'm not too sure, but California is on step two on opening up. Um, New York, well, f hold on. Well, New Jersey, most of New Jersey is opening up. They're go they're rolling. They're in the middle of phase one. Apparently there's four phases. You know what I'm saying? They're in the middle of phase one. So phase one is about to open up, uh, uh New York, New York city isn't planning on opening up until I, I heard ju like June. June something or whatever. They pushed it back. But New York state, on the other hand, New York state, it actually opened up on May 15 and all these other little counties and all that is actually opening up little by little, little by little, little by little. So New York state is opening up first before New, uh, New York city. And so far, New York state has been rolling on phase one slowly, but surely. So all these other states are, you know, opening up. I want to hear from you guys. I want to know if you guys are, you know, how were your experience with this whole pandemic? Did you lose somebody? Did you know somebody that lost somebody from this whole thing? You know what I'm saying? I want to hear it from you guys. Um, I want to, I want to know how you guys were, you know, handling it because the thing is that um, Bahari Moon says something very interesting, which I disagreed with. She said that, um, you know, this whole, you know, COVID-19, this whole coronavirus, you know, white supremacy is on his last legs. No, not at all. Because if it wasn't his last legs, then it sure as hell, you know, did a lot to show that it wasn't. And you did a lot to maintain it because I kept on seeing um, from news articles, news articles, news articles, news articles that, um, people were, um, like, especially black people were being victimized left and right from bullshit, not wearing masks. And if you are wearing a mask, you were being followed and you know, they were being victimized do, you know, even, you know, they were just finding excuses to victimize black folks. So. White supremacy wasn't on no last leg, nothing. You know what I'm saying? It was actually a lot stronger and it actually maintained the status quo a lot better than anybody thought. You know what I'm saying? So 
Um, I just wanted to just, you know, say that because the, I don't, I don't like when a lot of, uh, when people don't, that don't understand white supremacy or don't understand the systematic, you know, reach of white supremacy, say, say statements like that. I'm not calling, I'm not calling moon idiotic, but I'm calling her statement idiotic because you cannot say a statement like that without any facts to back you up. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like if I said that and then, you know, a couple of days later, then you start seeing videos of black folks being victimized by, by the people that were supposed to enforce this whole mask thing and social distancing stuff. You know what I'm saying? White people were all over the place, all huddled together in, in beaches and stuff. Police didn't do anything. There's pictures of police passing out masks. The Jewish community was literally, ha um, you know, gathered around in a funeral. Nobody did anything. Black people do that. Latin people do that. We get shot up. We get stomped out. You know what I'm saying? Especially here in New York. You know what I'm saying? So that whole white supremacy thing is in his last legs was very idiotic. And, and I wanted to curb that. You know what I'm saying? That's the reason why I'm bringing it up. I want to curb that. Um, for anybody that even thinks that that was even a thing. You know what I'm saying? To even think that was a thing, I wanted to just, you know, curb that a little. You know what I'm saying? Now, I want to move to my next topic, which is actually, you know, very interesting. Very interesting. So it's something I don't usually do, but um, I was watching this uh, thing on Netflix. It's called Trial by Media. I suggest everybody watches this. I really do. I suggest everybody watches this, uh, this, uh, this show on Netflix. It's called Trial by Media. It's only six episodes. It was I think six or seven episodes? But each episode, it just shows you that, um, it just shows you different instances and different things that happened throughout history that the media covered and either, you know, crucified or held a, a person up high from from what they really did or whatever the case is so um, i think the first the first episode was about some rape stuff or whatever the case is the second one is about bernard getz which i want to talk about the other one was amadou duliago um the african the african um kid well, african guy that got shot by police 41 times um, I don't know if anybody remembers, remembers that I, I surely don't remember that. What I remember is Sean Bell. You know what I'm saying? He got shot by police, I think 25 times. And the messed up part about that whole Sean Bell thing was, uh, I believe, I believe he was about it. He was, uh, he was, uh, celebrating his, um, not his honeymoon, but his bachelor party because the next day he was going to get married or whatever. And he got shot up 21 times in, in his car or whatever the case was. So, uh, yeah, that, that's what I remember. Sean Bell. So, but, um, I'm a, um, I'm a dude. I, I, I don't remember, but I know about it. You know what I'm saying? And, in, in, uh, in New York, they, you, they, we, we used to talk about it and all that. So now, now the thing is with Bernard gets, um, I want to, I want to really focus on this because uh, apparently at that time in 1984, this became a very heavy topic, very heavy issue that ended up happening at that time. And I wanted to just basically shed some light. I'm going to just give you guys the cliff notes of it. Basically in 1984, Bernard gets us in the subway and three black kids go up and basically come up to him and say, Hey, let me borrow five bucks. He feels his life is being threatened and he shot and he shoots four black kids. Mind you, I said in the beginning there were three, but he shoots four, right? Okay. So he shoots four, right? Um, later on, you find out that months later, months, months later, he was actually mugged in the subway, beat up or whatever, to the point where 
he was trying to get a, a, a gun a gun license or whatever but he couldn't so he went to florida bought one and brought it brought it you know to new york blah 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 you know um then later on in the in this documentary find out that bernard gets basically um his uh his testimony from the from the cops on video his testimony was surfaced by to the to the to the newspaper so before that he was looked as a hero because these black kids were vi uh, victimized no villainized actually these black kids were villainized saying that they were robbers because they had screwdrivers or whatever the case is but bernard gets quotes come out in the in the media basically and then he becomes a demon overnight all sharpton's in this documentary talking about how he knew already and all this other stuff and one of his quotes was that he looked at one of the kids he, he shot forgot the kid's name i'm sorry about that forgot the kid's name but he saw one of the kids that he shot looked at him and said you don't look so bad here hold another one and shoots him again so that goes to show that he wasn't you know on no self-defense shit he already you know knew what he was gonna do saw what he was gonna do and liked what he did at this point he still never said oh i'm sorry he would he would actually he actually went on statement say he would do it again you know what i'm saying so with that being said you find out um one of the kids that he shot the one with the statement yo you don't look so bad actually he was not even part of that little crew that's what i said three kids came into that car that that train car before it got shot that kid was never part of that crew gets bernard gets thought that that kid was just sitting down that was part of that crew he thought why did would he think that maybe because all of them were black and hey you're just because you're black you're just guilty by association you know these how these racists think but one part one part uh, of the documentary you know th didn't surprise me my man didn't go to uh, you know didn't get a di didn't go to jail for it or whatever the case is he did it. he got he got acquitted by all charges except for the gun the gun charge he actually went to jail for a year in reality he only went to jail for eight months got out everything's all good right the thing is there was this lawyer called ron kirby right not kirby a uh, kubi i'm sorry ron kubi a uh, uh, k-u-b-y right apparently he's a civil rights lawyer and there was a civil suit that bernard gets lost but this is the thing bernard gets did not um testify during his trial but he did testify on the suit that he was being sued for from the uh, from the family and it's very interesting what he said and i want you guys to pay attention and this mind you this is the north mind you this is new york city we're supposed to be super liberal right check this out he doesn't think so so i want you guys to pay attention very carefully all right and a very very public exposure of who bernard gets really was through his own mouth bernard gets never took the witness stand at his trial but he can be compelled to give a deposition for the civil suits against him all the bernard gets you can stomach and more day after day after day. A largely white Manhattan jury acquitted Getz of attempted murder in 1987. But the two-time defendant's civil case will be tried in the Bronx before a jury of four blacks and two Hispanics. Yes. City, state, and zip code for the record. Uh, Bernard Getz. When you attended a, a meeting of the Building Association in 1980 to dis discuss issues of cleaning up 14th Street, did you make a comment at that meeting? Uh, yes, I, you know, I, I made several statements, uh, but uh, I, did, I did make a, uh, a stupid comment for, uh, for which I'm ashamed, and I've apologized for Would you tell the jury what that stupid comment was, please? In effect, I said uh, 
the only way we're going to clean up this street uh, is to get rid of the niggers and the Sphinx. Mr. Getz, is it true that you said the guys I shot represented the failure of society? Yes. And you also said, forget about their ever making a positive contribution to society. Is that correct? I consider them to be a situation, to be a guaranteed formula for disaster, for, for misery. Wow. So the guys that he shot was the failures of society, in his opinion. The way we could clean up 14 streets by getting rid of the niggers and the spigs. My people, this is a man from the north. Let's stop that myth that only southerners are racist. Let's stop that, okay? Let's stop that bullshit. This is a white man that looks like Bill Gates' cousin from the north. If anybody looks at the picture of this, uh, of this geeky motherfucker, you could definitely see that this dude never got buns in his life. You know what I'm saying? Look like he got stuffed in clo uh, um, like lockers all his life. You feel what I'm saying? And he probably took it out on these kids. But the thing is, if you see if you see him, he's one of these uh, tall, lanky, you know, uh, geeky kids, like, uh, or whatever the case is. Can't even fucking fight. He had to use a gun. You know what I'm saying? But look at his mentality, though. All that education... All of that geeky shit that he was doing. He was a fucking engineer, guys. He was an engineer living in Manhattan, okay? All of this. And yet he said the way we could clean it up is by getting rid of the niggers and the spicks. Black and Latin people. That's what he was talking about. Do you guys still think people like this don't exist anymore? For my Latin people thinking that you're white, that you could be okay with these white folks, look how they think about you. There's a Bernard Getz literally every day in New York City. Fuck New York City. In every major city. Fuck every major city. In the whole United States, there is a Bernard Getz thinking like this. There is a Bernard Getz fantasizing about this. There is a Bernard Getz looking at you as the failure of society. You're the reason why society's the way it is. And you're the reason why you will never get out of your situation because you're a goddamn black or you're a goddamn spick. You know what I'm saying? That's how these people think about us. We got to get it through our thick fucking skulls. Black and Latin people, we have no friends out here. That's something we got to understand. We have no friends out here. And the allies that we do have, we have to vet them and vet them very well. You know what I'm saying? We have to vet these people extremely well because they... It's very easy for white folks to jump in and out of white supremacy whenever they find it convenient. It's been proven time and time and time and time again. It's been proven. What was that white lady that was part of that black, uh, that black um, activist group? You know, they were forming a black militia back in the 70s or something like that. She was a daughter of a billionaire. She was an heir of a goddamn fortune. She committed all type of crimes, robbed all type of banks, shot all type of cops. But when she got caught up, she said, oh my God, oh my, my stars, oh my God. I was brainwashed by the Negroes. That's exactly what she said. I was brainwashed by the Negroes. And guess what? Guess what? They said, well, sounds about right. Black folks do be brainwashing people. You know what I'm saying? Photos and videos of this white lady all around black folks, free as can be, putting up the black power fist, talking all that good shit in college campuses, going up in banks, robbing that shit. 
gets caught up. Well, I was brainwashed by the Negroes. Well, sounds about right. No more investigation here. We we solved the case. You know what I'm saying? That's something that we have to understand that white folks could dip in and out of white supremacy whenever they find it convenient. It's a hard, bitter pill to swallow. I understand that. But it's true. For all my swirlers out there, dating white, this is a reality. Not trying to come at ya, I'm just saying. This is a reality. You think that this person, after he smashes you or you smash shorty, she comes out of that bed thinking all oh, or something new? No. No, 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 no. She still comes out having that same white supremacist mentality. Hey, hell, we had slave owners back in the day having sex with their slaves. That didn't change shit. You know what I'm saying? That didn't change. They didn't say, oh, well, goddamn, what I'm doing is fucking wrong. No, 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 no. That didn't change shit. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't change anything. Anybody that even listens to Antonio, he's a staunch white supremacist. He's a wannabe white supremacist, but either way, he's a staunch white supremacist. Yet he wa- he likes to lay up with black women. And these fucking bed winches that will down da- will die to do that shit. You know what I'm saying? These bed winches will die to do that shit. You feel me? Which is insane. Which is insane. So when this whole documentary goes on with, you know, Bernard gets in that whole trial, how he gets acquitted, but then he, you know, gets found guilty in the civil suit, you know, he goes then files for bankruptcy in order not to pay. But basically they was like, yo, any, anything that he gets from the story, any money that he receives will go to the family or whatever the case is. Anyway, the whole point is that, you know, he was, he was like a token for the, for the people of New York, for the white people in New York saying, oh my God, you know, like this, I'm a victim too. You know what I'm saying? I'm a victim too. But when his real views start to come out, but remember guys, all the white folks, they agreed with him. All the white folks, they agreed with his message. The thing is, they don't like to say that shit out loud because being a racist isn't something really stomached. You know what I mean? You can't really stomach that. You can't really go past that around in your resume. Oh yeah, I know computer coding. I know how to greet people. And by the way, I am a graduated racist. You know what I'm saying? That's something that you cannot, people can't just pass around that shit. You, that's why they got to keep it on the low. You know what I'm saying? Most KKK members and neo-Nazi members, white supremacist members, they always keep that shit on the low. They don't want their identity to be, you know, um, exposed. That's why they say, well, we got doctors and lawyers and governors in this shit. You know what I'm saying? They don't like to have their shit exposed out there. Why? Because it's looked down upon even though they live in a system that protects them. You see the double standard there? You know what I'm saying? You see the double standard there? But when Bernard gets gets on the stand and says that racist shit, mind you, he's not the only one that thinks like this. He's not the only one that thinks like this. Oh, I regretted it when I said it at the time. Get the fuck up out of here. He's not the only one that thinks like this. There's plenty of white folks living in New York City that thinks like this. You don't believe me? Go to Staten Island. Know what I'm saying? Don't believe me? Go to Staten Island. You'll find communities of people who thinks like Bernard gets. You know what I'm saying? Fuck it. Go to Manhattan themselves. Manhattan itself. Manhattan likes to, New York City wants to be portrayed as like the liberal, liberal, liberal. No, the majority of the, of New York state is all red to be completely honest. 
You know what I'm saying? Majority of New York State is red. You know, I told you guys that story when I went to that flea market um, up it up in um, upstate New York. I told you that story. There was a flea market. You know, fucking home moms selling little bullshit. Why the fuck are people selling a Confederate flag? Make America great again. Donald Trump right next to it. Mad racist bullshit. This is this is New York City. What what the fuck is going on here? You know what I'm saying? Is what Antonio Batista said in that interview with Kim. These ideas are universal. These ideas are universal. That's something that cannot be, you know, misguided or misplaced. You feel what I'm saying? That's something that we really got to understand, people. We really got to understand that. These ideas are universal. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, moving on to my next topic, well, which is the main topic, you know, the main topic, historical benefits of black and brown unity. Now, what do I mean by that? Black and brown unity. Now, a lot of people, I've heard some, po- doing this research, right? I've heard some podcasts, people talk about stuff like this. I've even heard some people on YouTube talk about this. There's no such thing as black and brown unity. There's no such thing as black and brown unity. Black and brown unity, that shit dead. Blah, uh, uh, all this other bullshit. When historically, black and brown unity has been there in many instances and has helped out black and Latin people collectively. And this episode, I'm going to show ya how, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to show ya how on some of the things that I've talked about in the past to some of the things that I haven't talked about that I will talk about in the future. You know what I'm saying? But before I get into that, I always hear when I always talk to my Latin people, or when I talk to my black people, I always hear, yeah, that black and brown shit, black and Latin unity, yeah, that's cool, but will they accept us? Blah, blah. First of all, we should not be out here looking for acceptance from another group of people, all right? If, first of all, I have Latin people telling me this is some bullshit that I'm doing and we don't rock with you. Okay, that's cool. Y'all do what I y'all gotta do. I got black people telling me the same thing. Yeah, that's some bullshit. We don't rock with you. Okay, cool. I'm not begging for 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 acceptance. Y'all do what y'all gotta do. I'm gonna get in cahoots. I'm gonna get on code with the people that see my vision and that people who see my message as something positive. And I'm gonna rock with that. You know what I'm saying? There's plenty of black and Latin people that wanna get together and unite and wanna do this shit. There's plenty of Latin people who aren't Antonio Batistas. There's plenty of Latin people who think, talk, and act like me, but aren't as vocal. I interact with these people all the fucking time. I've always interacted with these people. I t- I even interviewed some of them. If you don't believe me, go back to my archives. I've interviewed some of them. The whole point of this podcast that I've always done from the beginning is to unite black and Latin people. And I've done it in a historical way. I've done it in a modern way. And I'm doing it by spreading a message spreading a message and if that message is being convoluted by oh well a black person hit me in the face when i was in the seventh grade fuck black people or when a black person says well a ecuadorian dominican person called me the n-word when i was seven years old fuck uh, latin people no then we don't need you you know what i'm saying when you can't 
separate, you know, bullshit incident, incidences with other certain group of people. If you can't separate that, then you're lost in the sauce. We don't need you. We don't need to save everybody. You feel what I'm saying? We don't need to save everybody. You feel me? My whole thing was always getting my Latin people away from that European mentality. Accepting the fact that you do have black ancestry. You know what I'm saying? If you don't want to identify as black, that's cool. But don't be identifying as white. You know what I'm saying? Because identifying as white comes with all the bullshit into it. Look at all the Latin people who identify as white automatically have some negative stigma with black folks. You know what I'm saying? So that's always been my message from the jump. Always been my message from the jump. So I've always, from this podcast, I always told Latin people that there is no difference in treatment in white supremacy, that they treat black people the same as Latin people. No difference. The only difference is, is by name and by the treatment in certain, you know, sectors. That's it. That is it. Clearly that is it. I've always said that with that being said and understood, let's go on to the main topic. And before I go again, but before I go to the main topic, I want to just clear something else up that whole racial beef between black people and Latin people dead that shit. That shit is dead. That shit is dumb. That shit is useless. All right. Black people. Y'all should not be looking at some Latin coons that we have in our community as a representative of that whole Latin community. The same way as Latin people, we should not be looking at their coons and their community as a representative of the whole black community. All right. I got a homeboy because he's been beat up by black people, bullied by black people all his life. He looks at black people negatively, which is a fucking stupid ass reason to look at black people negatively. It was some kid shit. You mean to tell me I bullied kids when I was younger. I got bullied when I was younger too. You know what I'm saying? That's some kid shit. Don't, don't, don't tell me you're dragging some shit when you were fucking six or seven uh, up to your adulthood. Get over that shit. Get over that shit. If that shit was traumatic, talk to a person that talks to you softly once a week and get over that shit. All right. Because you should not, then that wouldn't be any different from a white supremacist than you. You know what I'm saying? Looking at a certain group different because what you, what happened to you when you were in kindergarten, get the fuck up out of here. You know what I'm saying? Get the fuck up out of here. That's stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand there was some, there's racial instances. Like I saw like this, um, one video of these black kids throwing eggs at Mexicans or whatever. Cause they're selling a sign. Okay. That's some knucklehead shit. That's some knucklehead shit. The whole black community shouldn't be coming out talking about, well, we denounced that da 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 da. You don't think that these parents, if they found out that they're doing what they're doing, they ain't going to get an ass whooping. You feel what I'm saying? The same way how I saw videos of some Mexican kids in California you know, um, thugging it up with some black kid asking him, yo, what set you're from? What set you're from and all this other shit. And then my man getting beat up. You know what I'm saying? They are not the representative of the whole Latin community. Let's get over that shit. All right. Let's stop looking at coons and knuckleheads in our community as a representative. All right. With that being said, let me just focus on this shit right now. All right. Yeah. Sorry, but I got a little heated, my fault. But anyway, historical benefits of black and brown unity. I'm gonna run down some historical benefits, things that I've said before in the past and things I haven't even mentioned. Hope this is entertaining and educational for you guys, all right? Um, the first one that I'm gonna talk about is the Mendez versus Westminster, you know, school desegregation. 
yes in the beginning it was not meant for latin and black kids collectively it was not meant for that it was only meant for latin kids after the fight was getting heated and more publicized that's when it became more of black and latin people that's when it became more outspread because once Mendez and Westminster won the the Supreme Court, not the federal, but the Supreme. I believe was the Supreme. No, no, I'm sorry, the federal court. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The the federal court. Once once they won the federal court, all of California started to get desegregated, black and Latin kids. So if it wasn't for a Latin, Latin people. California would have never been desegregated. They wouldn't be a board versus Brown case. Latin people did that. Latin people did that with the help of some black folks, you know, in certain positions, but still Latin people did that. Let's not, let's not, you know, let's not get this whole thing convoluted. Now the other thing, the black Panther party. A lot of people don't even know the Black Panther Party had a lot of Latin members in that shit. Most of them were Puerto Rican, but either way, there were still Lati uh, Latin Latinos and Latinas in that. There was a lot of Latin members in the Black Panther Party. A lot of people don't know that. That's a perfect example of black and brown unity fighting for a common cause. The outcome was helping out the community, giving free lunch giving um education to the community also giving jobs to the community that's what the black panthers did that's exactly what the black panthers did to the point where it branched out it branched out from the black panthers and started the young lords the young lords was a model from the black panthers believe it or not the the brown barrettes that brown barrettes was a a, another another birth from the Black Panthers, believe it or not. All of these little the, the ones that I just talked about, Young Lords Brown Barrettes, they all did the same thing the Black Panthers did. Helped out Latin and Black communities to the point where they even had a Poor People's Campaign march in Washington. They had that. That was during the Civil Rights era. They had that. And I, I miss me with the whole world. The Black Panthers. Who were the Black Panthers at now? Yeah, it wasn't because of a Latin person. The Black Panthers wa it wasn't dismantled because of a Latin person. Let's keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it real. This is an example how black and brown unity is achieved and the outcome of it our communities benefited from it to the point where schools start to give free lunch out there i am a component of that during the summer i was getting free lunch in schools i would go out and get some free lunch at schools i was a component on that of that and i think my black and brown brothers that fought for that type of thing to still happen. I'm a component of that. Another thing that have that a lot of pro black people should be proud about a lot of more science temple people, all that should be proud about is the Schoen Schoenberg Institute center for research in black culture. Founded by a Puerto Rican man, Schoenberg. That's in Harlem, by the way. So for all the pro-black people thinking that, yeah, you know, I'm blacker and black and I'm black, y'all. You know, and y'all getting all that research. Well, I could study the Bible 17 different ways and tell you what it really means. And I could, you know, I could um, elevate from the moon to the stars and tell you or what what you gonna be doing in the future and i could talk to the finks the pharaohs and all this other crazy shit thank a puerto rican man named schomburg he did that you know why because he was in school 
And all he was learning was about European people. That's what he was learning. He was learning about European people. And he was like, wait a minute. What about Africa? What did Africa do? And the teacher responded, Africa didn't do shit. Africa didn't contribute to anything. And it took him years to research to find out Africa did way more than you would have thought. Africa did a lot. And he was a Puerto Rican man. Schomburg, right there in Harlem. You know, the Institute Research Center Research in Black Culture. You know what I'm saying? For all the all the pro blackity blacks t- talking about, yo, I could I could I could read the meta nature um 17 different ways and I could tell you exactly what it means. I got a Finx, I, I got, you know, I got an onk, I got this and I I'm I'm that. I I wake up with a black power fist every time. All that, all that knowledge, think a Puerto Rican man named Schomburg. That's a way how black and brown unity uni- uh, unites and helps out our community collectively. Collectively. Another one, Marta Moreno Vega. She's the founder of the Caribbean Cultural Center African Diaspora Institute. She's a woman that is half Puerto Rican and half Yoruba. She made another institute for African Caribbean culture. Well, actually Caribbean culture and African diaspora. So we could learn more for Latin people to learn more about our African ancestries and their benefits. This is how Latin and black people get together and help out our communities. This is how. So when people talk about, oh, what did black folks do? Oh, okay. Well, we got the young lords. We got the um, brown barrettes. If it wasn't for the Mendez family, uh, black people wouldn't even be desegregated. You know what I'm saying? Come on, let's not be ignorant here. Let's not be ignorant. It's really cool to put down a certain group of people. Yeah, that shit's real cool. But when we start learning about history, oh shit, now I know the truth. I, I let me not let me not spread that bullshit now. You know what I'm saying? All all those little DVDs that everybody got learning about different things about African diaspora. Yeah, shout out to Schomburg, a Puerto Rican man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Caribbean Central um, History of the African Diaspora. Yeah, Marta Vega, shout out to her. Half Puerto Rican, half Yoruba woman. Yeah, shout out to her. This is how black and brown people historically benefited themselves and us now. Let's cut the bullshit. Let's cut the bullshit. Another one. Fidel Castro. Now, I talked about Fidel Castro in in a live stream with Andrew. Shout out to Andrew. Go subscribe to his channel. Um, the Andrew uh, uh, twenty six one hundred one show. I don't know why he got that weird name, but whatever. He could have just said the Andrew show, but he had to put that weird ass numbers. Seems like you're trying to, you know, do a riddle. <laughs> no, but shout out to Andrew. Go subscribe to his show. Um, I did a live with him a couple of days ago, so shout out to him. But I, I talked about Fidel Castro and how he visited the Bronx. And Andrew didn't know nothing about this. And Andrew didn't know nothing about the contributions that Fidel Castro did for black people. A lot. Andrew didn't know this. And a lot of people don't know this. A lot of people don't know this. Fidel Castro has a a mother of Cuban descent, a Cubana, and a father of Spanish descent, a Spaniard. He was born. He, you know, did a whole rebellion, got Cuba, and then started to implement justice. A lot of light-skinned Cubans hate Fidel Castro, believe it or not. 
A lot of light skinned white passing Cubans hate Fidel Castro. Why? Because he didn't play that white supremacist shit. He said it, he kept it fair. He didn't stack the deck. All that other bullshit where black folks getting killed by cops and the cops getting acquitted. He didn't play that shit. Everything is fair. That's why those white Cubans hated Fidel Castro. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. And most of those white Cubans weren't really Cubans. They were uh, Spaniards that migrated to Cuba. Let's, let's, you know, that's something we gotta, we gotta understand. You know what I'm saying? But what did Fidel Castro do? He ended segregation in Cuba. He ended that shit right then and there. Oh shit. There was segregation in Cuba. Yes, there was. He ended that in Cuba. Also, also Ashada Shakur. I think um, it's Tupac Shakur's godmother, Ashada Shakur, who was falsely accused of killing a cop and got broken out of pe- uh, federal jail. How gangster is that? On some movie shit, huh? How gangster is that? The Black Panthers helped her get out of federal jail, broke her out of federal jail, and she went to Cuba. And you know what Fidel Castro said? Yeah, you're gonna have asylum here. That's not a problem. That's not a problem. You're gonna have asylum here. What what else did Fidel Castro do? And even to this day, to be honest. Even to this day, Donald Trump wants a shot at the court to come back and face and face, uh, you know, justice and all this other, you know, uh, but you know, same white supremacy. You know what I'm saying? Same way. If I was president, if I was president, shit, I'd be like, yo, I, I part in a shot. I'm part in her. I part in, uh, the black Panther member up in, uh, up in jail right now. I part in all the political leaders that right now are messed up. I part in everybody. You know what I'm saying? But that's what Fidel Castro did. He got, you know, a shot of Shakur Asylum. A Black Panther sister. You know what I'm saying? Another thing that he did was he helped the civil rights movement in the U.S. He funded a lot of civil rights groups. I believe, I'm not too sure. I don't know if this is a rumor. I believe that he, I, this is what I've heard, that he actually helped fund the Black Panther Party, and he also gave money to. I th- I'm not again. This is what I've heard. I haven't confirmed it. He gave money to the Black Panther Party. And I think he also gave money to um, the Nation of Islam. I believe. Not not too not too sure, but that's what I believe. That's what I've heard. But he helped. Uh, but he did help out the civil rights movement here in the United States. He also also helped out, you know, um, apartheid in Africa. That's what he also did. He also helped out apartheid in Africa. You know what he also did for black people in the United States? He said, if you are a black American, you will get free medical scholarship in Cuba because you will get a four to I think eight year degree, which is a master's degree in Cuba for free, for free. That's what Fidel Castro said. I did some research and I found out that a lot of people were trying to um, claim for that. A lot of people try to claim for that in the U S they set up this bullshit testing regulation that curbed a lot of people w- f- uh, without getting it. It curbed a lot of people that they, so they couldn't get it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what, that's what, uh, that's what the U S did. They, you know, some white supremacist shit. You know what I'm saying? Again, I understand that Fidel Castro, he's not a perfect person. I get it. You know what I'm saying? I get it. But let's look at all the things that he did. Let's look at all the things humanitarian humanitarian that he did you know as a humanitarian point of view he did a lot 
this Latin per, uh, this Latin guy, this Latin man, did a lot for the collective of the black and brown unity. Now, let me talk about now. Right now, the black and brown unity that is pretty much non-existent. I'm gonna keep it real. Right now, the black and brown unity is pretty much non-existent. You know why? Because right now, the new age, the new, um, you know, the younger people, they don't see that much of a struggle the way older people saw it back in the day. You gotta remember, white supremacy was in your face. Bam, 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 in your face, in your face, in your face, in your face. You won't forget it. You get reminded every time you leave your house. Now it's so fucking covert. You know, even though it's 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 over with, you know, with the white supremacist president that we got now, you know, but it's so covert either way that a lot of people say, oh, well, mommy, we made it. You know what I'm saying? Looking at white folks, like everything's all good and all this other stuff. So that's why I'm saying this. The, 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 the collective it isn't as strong because we have a lot of confused Latin people out here with that European mindset that we have to wake up from. We as Latin people need to wake up from that European mindset. That's something that has been done to us, you know, that's been done to us to confuse us, to keep us down. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be walking around like a bunch of dumbasses looking um sounding like Antonio. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to sound like Antonio, but that's what white supremacy has done. You know what I'm saying? And another thing that white supremacy has done was, Hey, you know, look, our white ally over here who hasn't done shit for the collective, but Hey, I'm going to prop them up and say that they're a white ally either way. You know what I'm saying? Again, with that confusion, 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 confusion. You know what I'm saying? Another thing that white supremacy has done to confuse Latin people, classifying us as white. Another thing that white supremacy has done to confuse Latin people was constantly label us as racist when we're not. When we are not. Prejudice, maybe. Everybody's prejudiced. Black people are even prejudiced. But racist, nah. Sorry. Doesn't apply. You know what I'm saying? Does not apply. You know what I'm saying? So, with that being said, that's why the black and brown unity is pretty much non existent now. Which I wish wasn't the case, in which I am trying to. As this podcast, as me b- getting more of a movement and a collective, which I am wishing that I am actually implementing more of a unity between black and Latin people. That's what I wish. And that's what my main, pretty much my main goal is. You know what I'm saying? Pretty much that's what my main goal is. I already gave you guys that it could work historically, how we benefited historically, how black and Latin people gave to each other historically. So when you hear these other people out here with no credibility, they change history whenever they want to change it. Talking about what has Latin people did. Yeah. Well, you could give them a list. Well, they did this and then I understand that some of these people, they're going to, they're going to misconstrue it. Well, that doesn't mean anything. Well, that doesn't mean anything. Well, what has Latin people done collectively? You know what I'm saying? They're going to be doing stupid shit like that. Don't worry about it. We don't need people like that around us. You know what I'm saying? We don't need people like that around us because people like that really themselves, them themselves, they themselves haven't done anything either. You know what I'm saying? They haven't done anything either. My whole message and my whole point is to get black and Latin people to unite. That's it. I'm saying, and hopefully I'm trying to do a a good job at that. You know what I'm saying? 
With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. You could also catch me at Instagram and Twitter at the same name, radical underscore Latino underscore. You could also, you know, support me through Cash App and my website. You know, just go to my website, radicallatino.com and donate, give whatever you want. Or Cash App, dollar sign, Radical Latino. You know, support your boy. That means it will give me better access to interviews and all that. You know, help out the show. And if you don't have any money to contribute, just go to YouTube. Watch, you know, some of my uh, my videos. I'm monetized. So if you see an ad, you know, just skip it. That's how you're contributing. Or just rate me five stars in the podcast app as well well remember this week i'm gonna be you know you know dropping this week or the next week i'm gonna be dropping a little trailer hopefully you guys enjoy it um with that being said i'm gonna catch y'all later peace